And this what we do. Let's go. Let's go. I told you. Shout out to Burpee. Pay attention. Deal with this prophet. So the Sussex. Fade Rother. He's psychotic. I see possible futures all at once. And in so many futures, our enemies prevail. But I do see a way. There is a narrow way through. What's going on, YouTube? We back in the Low Key Cave. Keyshawn Knives YouTube page, aka Mr. Low Key. And we back with another movie review. And we got Doom Part 2. Man, I was afraid of this movie. <laughs> as far as being introduced to this movie, I didn't know shit about Doom. Same thing as far as Star Wars. Even though I know some shit about Star Wars, like, technically growing up, you had no choice on what but to watch Star Wars. I don't care if your mama and daddy, it's Luke Skywalker, Darth Vader, you knew who them people was. And from what I've heard, Doom came before Star Wars. I guess it's the storytelling. I don't know, but I guess they say Star Wars actually took things from Doom. Anyway, I was afraid of watching Doom because I didn't think I was going to understand this shit. It just looked like this shit was going to be too epic. It was going to be way beyond my mind frame of thinking. But I don't know why I thought like that, being that I'm a person that loves movies like The Matrix. And being that I love The Matrix so much, this movie reminded me of The Matrix. It is more so of the buildup of, you know, Paul Atreides, as far as uh, Timothy O'Flay's character being the one. And you know the whole thing with Neo, the one. And even the whole thing with the buildup and him becoming that person or them even having the doubts of him becoming the one as far as uh, Paul Atreus, it definitely reminded me of that whole training process behind Morpheus and Neo because it's kind of got those similarities with him and my guy um, Javar Badar of uh, No Country for Old Men, the leader of the Freeman or the Freeman or what he's not really the leader, but he more so the person who pretty much takes the charge. But he's a guy that really believes in Paul Atreides as far as being the one. And that's Morpheus. Like everybody got their doubts. You know the whole thing with Morpheus and the whole thing with him pretty much believing in Neo. But the whole thing with everybody in that whole council and what they had going on as far as them going against the machines or whatever in the Matrix and them not believing in Morpheus and the whole thing with the prophecy or whatever. And that's kind of what they had with this. And that's why I was able to engage with Dune and be able to enjoy it and somewhat understand it. I am doing a review of part one. I'm going to rewatch it again because I just want to take more in because that, as far as part one, as far as doing, is more of a build-up. That's more for, more so of an introduction to everything, these worlds, the emperor, the baron, the whole thing with Paul Trader's family and his father and what they have going on and the whole thing with just the spice because that's the main thing with this movie and what everybody is after is this spice. But more so than anything, it's power like any other movie but even outside of the matrix i love these type of movies as far as the build up of these characters that we know gonna have to have that big fight sequence with somebody else kickboxer and all of them type of movies i'm just saying you get them type of similarities when you got these whole things with this going through the training process don't montages or whatever rocky i'm just saying but more so than anything when it comes to the sci-fi storytelling is part of it it's the matrix for me that makes me think about this movie and that's why i was able to enjoy it um more so it definitely um i was somebody who watched lord of the rings too i wasn't somebody who was cleansed on lord of the rings like that it's good movies i more so had to watch them like i said um i watched them when i was younger i forgot why i watched the first one but the second one i had to go to school to the movies to watch it and it was for an essay or something like that so i was just like may as well watch return of the king which was the last one but they gave me um reminiscence of those movies too especially the war aspects of those give or take i feel like lord of the rings i'm gonna just say that it had better war fight sequences too and i feel like it was kind of more at stake because when it came down to the fighting scenes in these movies they are good but they are short 
Like, it's not a lot that you, like, just heavy on it. Like, it's a scene in here with uh, Zoe Zalata. I can't get a damn name right, but my girl on Spider-Man. And you know, Euphoria. I don't think her name is Shiny in here. But, you know, um, pretty much Paula Trady's girlfriend. The one, you know, they pretty much building this bond or whatever. But she got a good fighting sequence in here, but it's just short. And that's, to me, with most of them outside of the last one, when it comes to Paul Atreides versus, you know, my guy, the, uh, the, uh, the bald-headed dude pretty much over the, uh, with the Baron <laughs> right here. I forgot his name, but um, is the Baron's nephew or is this the Baron's son? He family anyway, but he one or the other. But this was the longest one. Then this was a good fight sequence. I really enjoyed this fight sequence. Um... I didn't know what the outcome was going to be, even though I pretty much could tell that he, uh, Paul Atreides was going to come out on top. But outside of that, the portrayal, Timothy O'Flay, man, once again, I haven't seen Wonka. I haven't seen a lot of movies with him. But going into this, like I said, and watching that first movie, he convinced me. And when I say he convinced me, as far as him being this person, as far as being this one, this Messiah, that's all they say. Because he got a speech in here, man, where this nigga told he got that person. I was like, oh, shit. Like, the way he talking, and it's once he pretty much drinks this poison or some shit out of the um, sandworms or something, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong. I got to go back, man. I got to see this one time. Well, I say it's still in the theaters right now. But it's more so of him becoming and getting a more understanding of who he's supposed to become. And once he fully embraces it, that's when shit really starts to go. Because once he embraced this, that's what I'm saying as far as the action scenes, and once we, t we get to the actual war, they pretty much annihilating everybody. Ain't <laughs> Don't nobody stand a chance. Even when it comes to the Emperor, shout out to my boy Christopher Walken coming in with his cameo. And um, it's a lot of more people in here. We got a, a whole appearance from... Um, uh, <laughs> Anna Taylor Joy, if I'm not mistaken, my girl who about to play Furiosa, and she got a very short cameo, but she in here. Um, my girl off uh, Black Widow, but overall, just watching him, this was the one <laughs> as far as Paul Atreides, and him taking on that, being convinced that he is that one, and even with the whole sequence between him and Shiny, who was played by Zoe. I'm sorry if I'm getting her name wrong, but you know the whole thing with them and their relationship they build, but now he feeling like, well, not feeling like, but pretty much saying that, um, I got to make this deal because bringing the Emperor in and the whole thing with the Baron and him pretty much saying that, you know, I got to, outside of just protecting the Freeman, but going in and making this play for revenge for the people who pretty much destroyed my family as far as the Baron and the Emperor, hey, it's like you can't have that relationship because she not trying to hear that because he pretty much makes the whole situation where he's going to take the hand of the daughter of the emperor but he done had this whole building of relationship with shiny and the fact that now he's even taking in on this position which she don't believe in this shit she's like nah man I don't, this ain't it i want us to be you know together or whatever once again, I'm sorry if it sounds like I, I, I'm trying to make sure I got a complete understanding of the movie. It's a lot. At the same time, like I said, watching movies like The Matrix, I kind of have a better under, understanding of what was going on or whatever. And it's more so just watching this whole buildup of him fighting for the revenge of his family. And that's another thing I like is the whole thing and the aspect of revenge. I like watching those type of movies and him getting that get back. But, um... Outside of that, as far as villains, though, I really like the portrayal of the Baron's son or nephew, whoever he was, and what he was doing. Because I've been hearing a lot of things about this being one of the best sequels since The Dark Knight. No, that's not. <laughs> but once again, being that I'm not so indulged with Doom, that's probably why my opinion is like that. But watching a movie like The Dark Knight and watching this, no. It's like the whole thing with stakes. I don't feel like the stakes ain't even to that extent as far as people everybody seemed like they were safe is all I'm saying. Like we didn't lose nobody. Everybody was straight when Paul Atreides pretty much accept that he is the one. He come in like I said and annihilate everybody. Like he gets the people behind him and they believe he got this army behind him. Baron don't stand a chance. The Emperor don't stand a chance. And I mean that's all I'm saying. 
But sequels, storytelling, and once again, me not even knowing pretty much nothing about Doom. And like I said, I was scared to go into this because I thought I wouldn't even go understand this shit. And technically, I still, I ain't going to say I don't understand it. But so much as far as the whole run with the families, the spice, and all of that. But watching him, he convinced me. Like I said, he damn so convinced me. And I was ready to see that um, standoff with him and the Baron's grandson or son. Um, my guy got down <laughs> Batista, man. Batista, like I said, I like him and the fact that he's willing to come in knowing he this big, you know, Baron guy and what he's been able to accomplish in the WWE. But he is pretty much just like this. Like, just the sack and fiddle dude who just running around pretty much crying, running away from situations. He ain't got no big fight sequels or nothing like that. And I thought he was going to have this big fight with um, Josh Brolin's character. And I did like the reunion between him and Paul Atreides because, you know, he is pretty much the guy who trained Paul Atreides. He's pretty much his second father outside of, you know, his father who's played by Oscar Isaac in the first movie with him. But, yo, David Batista, man, <laughs> he was fun. Same way with, um, uh, Javar Badur, the guy off uh, No Country for Old Men, who I'm I'm gonna always see him as that. But even when they're going through the training sequence with Paul Atreides and the Sandworms, man, Dennis Villanui, the guy who directed this movie, shout out to my guy in the cinematography. I know he's supposed to be the guy who did the Batman and stuff. And I'm a fan of movie Sicario. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. Who Dennis Villanui directed and was written by Tyler Sheridan. Sicario, man. Prisoners is one of my ones I like too. I just don't like the ending like that with Jake Jalen Hall and Hugh Jackman. But overall, he ain't stopped. And I'm a, a movie I haven't seen for him yet is Arrival, the alien movie. I got to go check that out. But yeah, man, overall, I enjoyed this. Once again, me not really understanding the world of Dune and even y'all listen to my review, y'all can hear how I'm still a little confused on certain situations and certain dynamics that they had going along. But overall, I had a full understanding. And this definitely ends on a cliffhanger as far as a continuation of we can get a lot more going on. And as far as Paul Atreides, like I said, accepting who he is and pretty much coming in and saying, I'm the big dog now. And once again, a very good fight sequence. This was the one. And shout out to my girl as far as the one, uh, Zoe Zadado, my girl, out of Euphoria. And once again, I'm sorry if I'm getting her name wrong, but Shaney, if that's her name in the movie, she got a good scene too. And there's a couple good action scenes in here, but like I said, they just real short. They don't stand on them very long. It's more so a lot of dialogue in this. It's a lot of dialogue, which ain't a bad thing because I like what we get. And it is some good scenes as far as like this gladiator type scene we get with the villain. As far as the Baron and him coming out pretty much um, watching over what's going on. I feel like they were cheating, though, because my people that they had him fighting against, man, they were injured and shit. They was wounded or whatever. But give or take, he does have a very good fighting scene with one of them that's pretty much injured. But overall, he does have a good standing role as a villain. As far as my guy who played Elvis, who I didn't even know that was him that played Elvis. I had to go and see that. I was like, oh, shit, he played Elvis. But yeah, man, um, overall... I am planning on doing a Doom Part 1 review, which I'm going to do a more thorough examination of. <laughs> I'm going to try to sit down and watch. That's the one I want to watch again, being that I'm able to watch that again, because I can't watch Doom Part 2 yet unless I go, you know, never mind. I ain't going to see all that. But anyway, let me know how y'all feel about Doom Part 2. And overall, as far as this being one of the best sequels out right now, which everybody is saying, talking about it's one of the best sci-fi movies out right now, let me know how y'all feeling about this. Make sure y'all hit that like button. Make sure y'all hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit the notification bell if you want to upload no videos. And shout out to people who understand the world of Doom. My bad if I didn't go through it the way y'all think I should have went through it. Like I said, I made it very clear. I was afraid to watch these movies because I didn't know if I was going to understand them. And technically, I feel like it's certain parts that I'm still uh, kind of confused on. But overall, like I said, watching movies like The Matrix, they, <laughs> that's it for me. Other than that, man, let me know how y'all feel about Doom Part 2 and where y'all put it in as far as greatest sequels of all time. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe. Outside of that, make sure you hit the notification bell. Let you know when I upload new videos. Other than that, we out.